Hello and welcome to Geordie Land 1892. What a fantastic weekend, eh? Um, not only are we third in the Premier League after that fantastic win down at St Mary's on the south coast, playing Southampton, uh, winning 4 1. Um, Miggy Almiron getting seven goals in seven games, eight altogether this season. Uh, the Paraguayan is on fire and um, you know he's ended up he's he's even won the October goal of the month um, amassing 43% for one of his goals of the votes and 7% uh, for the other uh, the, 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 the main goal was against Fulham uh, that lovely volley that he scored against Fulham getting 43% of the votes for that and 7% uh, for the goal he scored against Little Arms Pickford uh, against Evan uh, two class goals he did have two in the hat for that competition and so did De Bruyne from Man City but uh, out of all nine goals Miggy's won the lot and uh, well done to him he deserves everything he's getting at the minute uh, he's worked hard and uh, what a player we're seeing it's been a massive change uh, for Miggy under Eddie Howe. Uh, same for Joe Linton. Now, other news about Joe Linton was that, unfortunately, he didn't get picked for the Brazil World Cup team to go down to Qatar. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a shame for him. I um, imagine that he was really hoping that he was going to get a seat on the plane. But Bruno, as we knew, he is definitely going. Uh, it was nailed on that he would be there and uh, he's instrumental for Brazil as he is for us um, so yeah a bit of a shame for Joe Linton didn't play at the weekend uh, as he was suspended because of uh, the amount of yellow cards news on Callum Wilson and uh, Kieran Trippier uh, apparently Kieran Trippier is fine he did pull up in the first half in that game at St Mary's uh, he came back out in the second half but they took him off as a precautionary measure in the 80th minute um, He's absolutely fine. Callum Wilson is fine. We knew before the game uh, against Southampton that he had been suffering from an illness, a bit of a virus. Um, and apparently at the end of the first half, he was feeling weak. He was feeling dizzy and uh, they thought it was better to take him off. Um, of course, uh, he did put a shift in, I have to say, even though he was recovering from an illness. Uh, so well done to Callum Wilson. Um, but nothing to worry about uh, obviously the England squad will be picked on or will be announced on Thursday and um, well it, it, it's a definite nailed on that Trippier will be going Pope will be going um, will Wilson go be going um, I, 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 I would imagine so I would really imagine so uh, it will be named on Thursday lunchtime apparently but uh, I definitely think he will be going um, the other player in the World Cup uh, that you know is Fabian Scher who's been amazing for us this season and um, you know he will be representing his country Switzerland Newcastle what's going on it's unbelievable and uh, to be a Toon fan to be a Geordie at this moment in time it's uh, it's cloud nine isn't it it's fantastic and uh, Miggy uh, like I say, seven game, uh, seven goals in seven games, um, winning that award, the Premier League goal uh, for October, uh, absolutely brilliant for him. Um, Newcastle have been mind blown, really, uh, in the month of October and the start of this November, scoring a total of twenty goals and only conceding four. Um, you know, it, it just, it it's testament uh, to the defence, the midfield and the attack, the way they're all playing together as a team, the camaraderie. Uh, it, it's, it's amazing to watch uh, after the dross that we've had to watch for quite a few years. Um, obviously, Pope, Byrne, Trippier, Botman and Cher are, are doing amazingly at the back. Um, they're like a brick wall defence and... Um, you know there's a lot of height in there and I imagine a lot of teams don't really relish the thought against playing against that defense 
but you know like i say we have netted 20 times uh, in the month of october and the start of november um you know let's not forget um yes we did have a takeover there are pundits that are saying it's because of the money it's a bit ingenuous to say that it's just money because I think the job that Eddie Howe is coaching staff and I think the lads themselves, uh, the work they're doing on the pitch and especially off the pitch with Eddie Howe uh, is nothing short of amazing. And, um, you know, um, Eddie Howe has getting some fantastic results for out of Joe Linton and Miguel Moron. Um, he's turned them into completely different players uh he's just changed their fortunes around and um yeah it can't be ignored yes we have spent a bit of money we're always going to get that um we're going to get that thrown at us forever forever more um you're just going to have to take it on the chin you're just going to have to ignore it let it go over your head whatever you want to do but you know there are teams in the premier league who have spent a lot more money than us and uh, they're not doing so well um, and a few teams that have been doing it for years and years on end um, Man United, one of them I'm sure Man United fans would tell you they've spent a lot of money and it's probably lack of decent coaching and unity in the team that is their big problem at the moment uh, on the other hand, Newcastle United uh, they seem to be really bonding together in every way possible and uh, they are truly a team now obviously the weekend we saw newcastle go down to st mary's uh an unbelievable away support again remember there was a train strike uh so it made it more difficult for supporters to get there uh you know 646 mile round trip i believe to southampton from newcastle uh, loud and clear the support was fantastic and every time the camera was uh, on the Newcastle United support as the joy and the happiness uh, on those faces were, were great to see. Uh, Miggy Almiron, yet again, 35 minutes. Um, I mean, the Southampton defender was all over the place. He didn't know what to do with him. His body went one way and his legs went the other. He seemed paralyzed for a second. He just, it seemed like fear. He didn't know what to do with him. He didn't know, didn't know whether he was gonna hit it from distance, but he didn't. He tapped it round him and he finished it off exquisitely. And, uh, you know, like I say, he's, 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 he's been doing absolutely marvelous, hasn't he? Um, so we went in at one nil at half time and, uh, no Wilson, second half, like I said, uh, suffering from a bit of dizziness from a virus that he's picked up during the week. Uh, and, you know, Chris Wood came on and he didn't disappoint, did he? Um, you know, an absolutely fantastic goal uh, on 58 minutes, I believe. Um, he just turned and he seemed to know where the goal was. Uh, it was it was a great shot, great, great turn. He put a bit of bend on it. And it went straight in the bottom of the corner, giving Southampton goalkeeper absolutely no chance whatsoever. Uh, the New Zealander did us proud, and he done himself proud, and that's got to give him oodles of confidence after scoring a goal like that. Now, Joe Willock was the next to inflict damage on Southampton, and uh, to be fair, his neatly guided low shot, uh, the same co bottom corner really as Wood, uh, struck just earlier um, and he, he finished it off lovely and it was great to see him get a goal as well for all his hard work the last few weeks the kid's been been an engine really and uh, you know he he, he got, got his just rewards on Saturday uh, Sunday sorry um, for that for that uh, for that goal um, no really good finish uh, timed it beautifully giving the goalkeeper no chance um, Newcastle are 3-0 three, three up at this point in their coast and uh, the heavens obviously had opened a lot earlier. It was absolutely pouring down. It was biblical. And, um, you know, Newcastle will be disappointed. The defence will dis be disappointed. Uh, giving away a goal to Southampton, um, it, it looked a bit too easy, to be fair. Uh, you could see by Botman's face were very, very annoyed. All of them were annoyed with themselves, giving away that clean sheet. 
Um, but what can you do? Uh, it happened. Uh, and you've just got to get on with it and get on with it. That's what they did. And literally two minutes later, um, by this time, John Joe Shelby was on and, and, and Alan San Maximum was on and they played, played a few substitutes and uh, Alan San Maximum fed the ball beautifully to Bruno, into the path of Bruno and he struck it from distance into the bottom corner as we know he can and it was world class. Uh, what a goal, it just it looked easy but it, it was massively hard now. <laughs> um, but Bruno absolutely fantastic the fact that John Joe Shelby was on the pitch uh, it means that Bruno can get up into those positions he can go forward he can maraud and I tell you what when he shoots even from distance he's so dangerous man final whistle and 4-1 winners at St Mary's uh, Southampton well go down to the bottom three and uh, those consequences for that really um, the manager uh, Hassan Huttel he uh, eventually lost his job on Monday morning um, obviously Southampton and the board weren't happy about the position or the direction they're going in and uh, unfortunately was relieved of his duties at Southampton on Monday morning See, tomorrow night Newcastle United will be at St James's Park in the Carabao Cup or the League Cup if you like to call it that um, not our best competition in history to be fair we've only ever made one final and we got beat by Manchester City 2-1 in that final in the 70s um, but it is a sellout tomorrow night I think it's the biggest crowd ever for a League Cup um, competition um, I think even even the semi-final back in the 70s was about 40 odd thousand so you know they've easily they've easily easily bypassed that but uh, Crystal Palace it won't be easy um, we've played them already this season and we got a nil nil draw in the Premier League seeing that we should have gotten a goal which uh, VAR had other plans uh, there was nothing wrong with that goal uh, and it should have been one with one nil to Newcastle but I'm um, imagining Eddie Howe is going to make a lot of changes at the start of that game um, and see how it goes. Let's see if we can kind of get through and uh, give other players a rest. Um, but it would be nice to see Newcastle go through. Eddie Howe says he's tore up the whole philosophy and getting on with the Premier League. He, he, he wants to do well in Cups and, uh, and rightly so. And... Um, you know, this could be this season a good chance to get some silverware for Newcastle United. Um, I don't care what silverware it is, uh, it would be lovely to win something, wasn't it? Uh, I, I've never actually seen Newcastle win silverware, apart from maybe the first division and things like that. Um, but uh, no, they, unfortunately I was only two months old when uh, the last time they won a, a big shiny cup, a proper cup. Uh, the Fairs Cup in 1969. I'd like to give a shout out to Davy Lake in Malaysia. I think he's in Malaysia at the minute. He could be in Australia. He pounces around there quite a bit. But hello, Davy Lake. And um, obviously, a shout out to Italy Magpies as usual. Um, I hope you're all well and, uh, and been enjoying the football at the weekend. Uh, more to come tomorrow and then Saturday. Um, so anyway, from me, Keeper, at Jodyland1892. So um, see you soon, and uh, all the best, and ciao for now.